Today I will be showing you how to create a beautiful rendered scene. We'll be going over the composition of the shot, we'll be going about the in-depth simulation, how to create the nice beautiful tendrils of smoke. I'll be showing you the rendering techniques I use to create that nice looking uh, depth of field effect and then we'll bring it all together in compositing to create our final shot. Before we jump in, I first want to thank Johnny Fair who provided me the model, the nice incense stick with the accompanying board. Um, you can get that asset on Gumroad, the link is in the description below um, with an affiliate link, so check it out. And also I want to thank Xeno Pilgrim who is the creator of that lentil lens shader which we will be also talking about in this video. So be sure to check out today's video and I will see you and now let's get and now let's jump right in. All right, so as you can see, we are back in Houdini and today I want to show you how I set up this render. We just have a few elements. We have that um, the hero object in the foreground and then we have a few background elements just to have something in the reflections, just that the eye can see something visually is in the background, which just helps with the composition in general. You can grab the asset from this Gumroad link, which was created by Johnny Fair. He does lots of nice, interesting things and this is one of those, so a very close up um, texture of this smoky object, that's what he calls it, and it's an 8K texture map. Uh, check it out, it's two bucks, you can grab that, it's a quite good price. Check it out and then you can use the same asset I'm using in the scene as well. I was doing a little bit of optimizations to the object, so once you bring it in, I was using the file import fbx here on the left, Im import that and you get this whole um, structure. What I wanted to do though, um, I wanted to create some kind of um, bend effect on this little smoke rod. On default it's quite straight, so what I was doing, I was bringing it in, first I was extending um, the back, you can see I extended this little here, grabbed the points, moved them down, and then I applied a bend modifier to just um, have some weight on it, so it's not perfectly straight. And then I create this out null to um, get for the render. But on the right, you can see I have a, I did a few more things. So I extracted the front piece of the smoke element. I blasted off the front and back, and then created a, a poly object from this. This is being used for the smoke object to generate some smoke from it. And in terms of composition, you can see we have a very subtle camera movement um, from the left to the right, and we have some objects in the background. So first the camera is quite basic, it's just uh, laterally um, animated, so we go from left to right, it's a linear motion, nothing fancy here. Um, but then for the um, scene placement composition, I created a little plane just to get some kind of um, texture on it. I made a um, top-down projection for the UVs, and that's it for the table, and then I was using um, this OD Tools material library, um, which is a third-party plugin for Houdini. The link is also in the description uh, below. And I just loaded all my assets in here and I just um, double-clicked them to create them and then I just placed them in the scene, quite straightforward. We have this little soldier, this little tentacle thing in the back, and then we have this uh, Inception spinning top. So these uh, three elements are just there in the scene to catch some nice reflections. You can see we get this nice bouquet of this um, spinning top and we see this nice out of focus objects in the background as well. Um, for the shading, these objects are very simple. There's nothing much going on. As you can see um, we have the spinner. It's just a standard surface shader, metalness one. So we get some reflection. We have some plastic shader. The table has just um, some texture of a table or some wood texture with some displacement. I'll, I'll show that to you in a second. And the same for the stick. So these are the maps from Johnny. I didn't do too much. I just did a little bit of color correction and a little bit of um, ranges for the roughness. And that's pretty much all I was doing. All right, so this is the scene um, without the depth of field applied. You can see the spinning top here and the plastic materials on the other guy. So obviously, as I said, it's quite straightforward. You just have a very basic uh, materials on them. The table is even not so high poly as well. So we just have the little texture and we have some kind of glossiness to it. The background is just a HDI, which I used for lighting. Um, it's called Industrial Pipe. You can get that from HDI Haven. And I'm just using this um, default orientation and I just have this in the background. And then in my render camera, what I did, I just enabled depth of field here to get this nice bouquet. Um, this is now the default um, depth of field, which is with the Arnold camera. Um, but for the final render, I was using a plugin called Lentil. This is a plugin for Arnold, so it works with any DCC, which, support, which is supported by Arnold as well. 
The first thing what you have to do is create a camera shader which will be plugged into this camera shader of your render camera. And I created the camera shader in my out um, context. I created a right click and material network in here in Arnold material. And then I use the um, camera out um, shader here. And then you can create your own camera shader. And then if you have it installed properly, you get the lentil camera and you just plug the camera into the camera input here. And then you have your camera to play with. You can copy the focus distance and I made sure that the distance is equals to where this hot glowing ember is. My uh, working unit is on in meters. And then I played around with focal length, bi-directional settings, just to make it uh, work quite easy. And then in the um, out, out context again, you need to um, create this Arnold, uh, sorry, the lentil operator. You just hit lentil and then you get this operator. And all you have to do is just connect this to your Arnold um, render output. And then you also need to create the image builder. So these image builders are um, quite new to Arnold. It's like a post process. And what Zeno did, the creator of Lentil, he created his own imager. And you just have to create that Lentil imager and just hook that up. It needs to be the last one to connect. And then in your render settings, you make sure that you connect this imager um, context into the slot here. And then you're done with this. So now if you render, it will be rendered with the Lentil shader. Uh, but before I forget, um, in the camera, you still need to connect it here. So the camera shader, you need to point it to the shader you created, um, which is this material builder material. And now if I render maybe this region, you can see the scene is generated and then it should be now rendered with lentil. At least the post process of the depth of field will be rendered with lentil. You can see the focal length changed a little bit and you get the round bouquet now. This is because we are using a different kind of um, bouquet using this lentil thin lens. And you can see it's a lot cleaner than it was before. And this is the beauty of Lentil. It's a very nice uh, bi-directional path tracer to um, soften out these uh, noisy patterns. All right, so now let's talk about the smoke simulation. Um, I have the smoke context and essentially what I'm doing here, I'm bringing in this tip, which I showed you before. This is just a front piece of that amber thing. And essentially what I'm doing now, I'm just creating lots of tiny points on it with some density attribute. And if I visualize the density, um, I made it animated. So I click the animate noise. And if I slide the time so you can see there is some motion going on. It's very gentle. It's very um, smooth. It's not like very fast moving. And then I did a similar thing for temperature just to get some kind of random uh, temperature. So we don't always have a constant because you do want, want to break things up. And after that, you create this volume rasterizer, which just converts those points into a volume, which is then used in the solver. And for this video, I was using the Axiom solver. It's also a third party um, plugin for Houdini, which uh, is also in the link uh, below. And you can check it out. It's quite good. It's on the GPU, it's very fast. And I'll be showing you how I set it up by using this volume rasterizer and this Axiom. You just connect these two things. And if I hit now play, you can already see the smoke is now um, going upwards. This is based on temperature. If you have a hot temperature, it goes uh, rises faster, right? And then you just play with these parameters. This is essentially what it comes down to. So um, I was playing with the viscosity. So if you reduce the viscosity um, or actually increase it, it will be it will smooth out the velocity field. And you can see now it's a pretty much like a straight line. We lost all this. Um, the the uh, turbulence and here you can see all this broken up stuff goes away if you increase the viscosity it's essentially a blur field for the velocity it's quite cool because you want this wispy um, tenderly like smoke and then you can play around with turbulence fields which are like um, patterns like wind essentially this is obviously a bit much but you can see what what what's happening so and the turbulence drop down you can change the size um, and the speed so we probably want it a lot slower because we want these gentle movements and we probably want maybe a larger swirl size maybe to try one and we reduce the turbulence maybe to 0.2 and then this is essentially how I got to the result where I wanted to go so let's see you can already see we get this more wispiness this is obviously still too strong 
but you get the idea, right? So this is then obviously fine tuning this and you can also add disturbance to break up the surfaces. Um, and again, there's no proper rule how to set things up, but this is essentially, I played a lot <laughs> until I got the right look I wanted to get. And then in the end, um, this is my final piece. I did some motion effects here to create like a nice turbulence animation. So it's it's most of the time static, but then we get some effect in here. And we can see it as well, added um, noise, I guess. You can see this is my noise pattern and you can see that it is moving based on time, which is perfectly what I wanted. And then this is my final, my, my cached smoke can see this is very tendry like and my other settings in here um, I added wind so we have a bit of a lateral motion to it and that is essentially all I was doing and I got this result the pipe uh, pi uh, pi post process is just to um, convert this to a VDB so on can render this on the fly you can um, resample the velocity fields to get a faster render and then you can also use 16-bit instead of 32-bit which is also a smaller disk like it has a smaller um, footprint on the disk and yeah there you have it so this is now the final render in um, in Houdini and then I was writing this out to disk um, I was using a render farm or not a render farm but I got a loaner um, machine from Dell uh, thanks actually <laughs> for that loaner machine, it's a Dell Precision 3240 and I'm using this to render most of my simulations nowadays. It's a re really nice and beefy machine and this was um, rendered now overnight on that machine and it was, a, I think, a pretty good result. I also cranked up AA samples to be um, adaptive, so I have maximum of 15 and 5, so it's a nice uh, clean render. Um, so as you can see that the smoke is not really dissipating in the beginning and I, I looked at quite a, of a lot of references that it's actually fading out in the beginning. Um, so what I did, I did some time offset here to offset the whole frame and then I did some tracking to track it on it and then I did some key mixing to essentially frame offset and blend it back in to just get this translucency effect here. So it was a bit of a hack. I should have done this in render but this was my comp approach to fix that. And then I added a, a little bit of a glow. You can see it's based on luminance here and it's just very gentle, very subtle bit of glow on this on this front piece here. I did a bit of uh, chromatic aberration. It's not too much. It's a subtle effect again. Try to keep it very subtle um, as you, if it's too much, it's just uh, um, annoying a little. So you can see it's just a little bit of color fringing on the edges here. Then I'm adding a vignette to um, create this, obviously this, this camera lens effect on it. Did some exposure um, adjustments here to make it a bit brighter and then gammered it up. So very straightforward. This was um, being encomped in Nuke, which is a industry standard compositing software. And I'm just using this to quickly load in my EXL files and uh, get some comp going. You can see before and after. Um, it's a good change, I think. It got a little bit more realistic with the lens effect and maybe it's a bit too bright and the smoke is too dense. But essentially this was uh, the whole process for this image here. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial about that beautiful rendered scene. And also I want to thank again Johnny Fair for the model. I want to thank Zeno Pilgrim for that amazing lentil shader. Um, I want to thank Matt Allard from Dell who provided me that loaner machine which enabled me to render this whole um, sequence on my little render farm. So thanks again everyone and I will see you in the next tutorial.